People with AIDS, Wikipedia article audio. The People with AIDS self-empowerment movement is a social movement by those diagnosed with HIV AIDS which grew out of San Francisco in the early 1980s. The PWA self-empowerment movement believes that those diagnosed as having AIDS should take charge of their own life, illness, and care, and to minimize dependence on others. The attitude that exists throughout the movement is that one should not assume that their life is over and will end soon solely because they have been diagnosed with HIV AIDS. Although most of the earliest organizers have died, and organizations dissolved or reconfigured into AIDS service organizations the self-empowerment and self-determination aspects of the movement continue. Possibly the best known example of a continuing PWA group is AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, which has chapters around the world and has had great success bringing attention to and change regarding issues concerning PWAs. History New York HIV AIDS Activists The Denver Conference Debate The Denver Principles After the Denver Conference PWA Coalitions and National Organizations The Denver Principles Project PWA is also used simply to mean person with HIV AIDS regardless of whether that person is associated with the PWA self-empowerment movement. Bobby Campbell was a gay San Francisco man who was diagnosed with AIDS in September 1981, making him one of the first people in the U.S. to be diagnosed with AIDS. On the recommendation of Marcus Conant, a doctor specializing in AIDS care, Bobby began meeting with another man diagnosed with HIV, Dan Turner. The two met at Turner's house in the Castro. There, they laid the groundwork for what was to become known as People with AIDS San Francisco. After that, Turner was invited to speak at the birthday party of the late Harvey Milk, the openly gay city supervisor of San Francisco who had been assassinated in 1978. On Castro Street, Turner, as well as Campbell, identified themselves publicly as having AIDS. Turner's speech urged people to do three things, keep informed, be cautious but not paranoid, and be supportive. This was the first of many speaking events for Campbell and Turner. Shortly afterwards, a meeting was held to form the KS AIDS Foundation, which later became the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. In May 1983, the first AIDS Candle Light March led and organized by People with AIDS was held. The stated goal of the march was to draw attention to the plight of those with AIDS and to remember those who had died. The march was led by a banner with the slogan Fighting for Our Lives, which became the motto of the movement. Later that month, on May 23, 1983, People with AIDS San Francisco voted to send Campbell and Turner to the National Lesbian and Gay Health Conference at which the second National AIDS Forum would be held. On the East Coast, New York City served as another hotbed for the movement. One of the first people with AIDS groups in the East was formed by Michael Callan and Richard Berkowitz. Callan and Berkowitz met through their doctor, Joseph Sonnabend, in 1982. Initially, Callan and Berkowitz attended a peer support group for people with AIDS at Beth Israel Hospital, as well as meetings of gay men's health crisis. After some time, however, the two grew frustrated with the meetings, and left to form gay men with AIDS. In the same year, they wrote an article for the New York native titled We Know Who We Are, Two Gay Men Declare War on Promiscuity. In it, they put forth that AIDS was the result of not a single virus, 
but a cumulative overload of the immune system from sexual promiscuity and abuses of the body. Their hypothesis on the cause of AIDS has since been dismissed. In mid to late 1982, Callan, Matthew Sarner, and several other people with AIDS became aware of the New York AIDS Network, which met every Tuesday morning at the East Village offices of the Community Health Project. The New York AIDS Network was founded by Hal Cudden, Virginia Apuzo, and a doctor, Roger Enlow, as an open political forum for the sharing of information related to AIDS. As those in New York grew frustrated from listening to doctors, nurses, lawyers, insurance experts and social workers talk about AIDS, they realized they were hearing very little from the real experts. The decision was made to attend the second National AIDS Forum at the National Lesbian and Gay Health Conference, which was sponsored by the Lesbian and Gay Health Education Foundation. By this point, some of the activists in New York learned of Bobby Campbell and others in San Francisco. They learned that Campbell and others would be in attendance, and had been calling on organizations that provided AIDS services to sponsor gay men in order so that they may attend the conference. Alan Long, another person with AIDS, sponsored three of the New York activists to attend the conference in Denver. At the conference, which had the theme Health Pioneering in the 80s, people with AIDS from around the country met, gathering in a hospitality suite organized by Helen Chiedinger, RN, and Dan Bailey, who coordinated the event. Bobby Campbell took charge of the discussion. He believed in a political network of with groups of AIDS infected people in every major city. It was believed that these groups would then form a national association of people with AIDS. There was very little friction between those in attendance, with only small arguments such as the terms patients and victims versus people with AIDS, the latter of which was agreed on as being the label of choice. This discussion led to the drafting of the Denver Principles. The Denver Principles were drafted during the conference. They read. The drafters of the Denver Principles stormed the closing of the conference in order to present their work. At the presentation, the San Francisco activists had brought the Fighting for Our Lives banner. Matthew Sarner, a New York City activist and MSW, is center in the photo holding the banner. The presentation brought the crowd to tears and it was a full ten minutes until the audience was able to compose itself. The keynote speaker, Ginny Apuzo, in response to the presentation, opened with, if those health care providers in attendance were the health care pioneers, then those of us with AIDS were truly the trailblazers. After the Denver conference, Five of the activists began to plan for the National Association of People with AIDS while on the smoking section of the plane. Afterwards, the first of the political organizations planned was formed, called simply PWA New York. While PWA New York initially was met with resistance by the gay men's health crisis, the two organizations learned to coexist. PWA New York is noted for designing the first safer sex poster to appear in New York bathhouses. Across the country, PWA organizations became active. In Denver, local PWA members took part in parades and lobbied in the legislature, in general, putting a human face on the disease. In San Francisco, posters similar to those in New York were distributed. In June 1984, the annual Gay Freedom Day parade in San Francisco was dedicated to people with AIDS. People with AIDS marched near the front of the parade, with Bobby Campbell and the Fighting for Our Lives banner. By the mid-80s, PWA New York faced challenges. A negative environment, 
combined with the deaths of many founders, led to the group being disbanded. However, the New York activists were quick to rebound, forming the PWA Coalition. PWA coalitions continue to exist today throughout the country. In 1987, the National Association of People with AIDS was incorporated as a 5013 not-for-profit corporation to be the national voice of people with AIDS. It was the oldest national AIDS organization in the United States and the oldest national network of people living with HIV AIDS in the world when on February 14, 2013 Napway declared bankruptcy and announced it was suspending operations. In 2009, the National Association of People with AIDS and POZ magazine announced a new initiative called the Denver Principles Project. The Denver Principles Project will recommit the HIV community to the Denver Principles and dramatically increase NAPWAY's membership. With a vastly increased membership, NAPWAY will be better able to advocate for effective HIV prevention and care, as well as to combat the stigma that surrounds HIV and impedes education, prevention, and treatment of HIV.